Welcome to the channel. Today's going to be super awesome because we are joined by Curran, our mate. He's come back. He's going to show us four amazing things from the Indian subcontinent that hopefully will blow our normals' minds. So genuinely so excited to be back here in your sparkling new studio. So I can't wait to get started. Guys, it's the first cloche. Lift it on number one. I know what that is. I've seen these before. Yeah, no, I do know this what that is. This is a guessing game. Yeah, so you throw you throw the ball. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you hit it, but it doesn't go off the hoop, and then you have to you have to throw yeah. another one. You're not shy about oh, cracking gosh. terrible jokes, oh. are you? Oh, it's a f***ing coconut. <laughs> <laughs> Why have you put coconut under the cloche as number one? It's it's such a versatile, and I won't even say nut or fruit, but it's such a versatile tree ingredient. Each one of you, give me one use you think a coconut tree as a whole could have. Milk it. Cream it. Climb it. Climb Turn it, it into alcohol. Then That's always my favourite. Turn it yeah, into alcohol. Drink it. Could you use, use these bits for like brushes and stuff? Exactly. I mean, that's for, for coir ropes. You know, some of those brown twine ropes are made with coir. Boys, oh. how'd you get into a coconut? You are, you are so manly. <laughs> What are you doing now, Jim? What are you doing? Fuck it. Don't think that's. Right, we would not do well on a desert island. <laughs> oh! 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 oh, oh it's leaking! Oh. Squeeze. Squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting wet! So, how's it meant to be done? So, I wouldn't go vertically, I'd go through the centre. Basically, hit it and then keep rotating it. <gasps> imagine, Ooh. imagine if there was a little present in there, like a Kinder Surprise. <laughs> oh! Hey yeah. Well done. <laughs> Nicely done. Fantastic, yeah, look at that. Now, Curran's brought you another toy. Mm -hmm. A hand version of something we've played with before. <gasps> oh, oh no. no! No, not that. Don't we know, I don't like this thing. Hello. Oh, that is quite therapeutic. That's sound. Very satisfying. If you haven't got a cleaver, basically the back of any heavy knife, mm -hmm. even the handle of a wooden spoon, you yeah. just want that regular tapping around the middle. This is more difficult to do if you haven't got one of these, Curran. How would you or could you do it? To get the same consistency is going to be hard, but what you could do is crack into it, peel the skin out and then put it through a food processor. So the next step is making one of my absolute favourite ingredients, coconut milk. Most people think coconut milk is this whole sort of processed thing that comes in tins. But basically what it is, is you get that fresh coconut, get it between your hands and squeeze through that little mesh. You could use muslin, clear. What comes out, that first extraction, South India known as the first extraction, Sri Lanka very similar, um, is what people often refer to as the cream of coconut. But that is the pure gold, which depending on how moist the coconut is, you, uh, you know, you'll get a little bit or you get a little more. And that's why it's liquid gold, because this will not be cooked with you. It's kept aside, it's known as the first extraction, and that's only pour, sort of stirred into Finishing cream. your cream. Uh, your, it's in desserts in Asia, so Thailand, if you have desserts, it's that thick coconut cream. Otherwise, it's uh, just at the end of a curry, or end of a dish, you'll squeeze some in. And that shell over there, I'm going to use that to serve one of the dishes we make later. And that is how you milk a coconut. On to number two. The second tasty thing mm -hmm. is under the cloche. Off you go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a whiff of that. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's it's dried shrimp. I think it's like it's more like sardines, dried sardines. Or like bonito. Or dried... <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm not that bad. It's more meaty, it's more meaty than shrimp. Yeah. More meaty right. as opposed uh, to fishy. Like, not as intense as well. <laughs> You've actually guessed it. Oh. In your earlier guesses. Skipjack tuna, bonito. Uh, so Jamie guessed them. Um, <laughs> it is dried fish. It's known as Maldive fish. Very often when I say it, people say, what did you just say, Maldive fish? From the Maldives. Uh, it's a bit more, it could be Maldive if it's been dried badly, but it's from the Maldives. So it's, 
exactly the same fish that gives you katsubushi mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from Japan, the little dancing fish flakes, or the other kinds of you know dried fish which go into dashis and stocks. Yeah. So just umami rich, super you know packed with flavor. Mm. Proper flavor and, bomb. And what are they going to do with it today? So we're going to make a very traditional pole sambal. Pole meaning coconut. A sambal is a is a kind of relish. And it's very simple. So it's got five ingredients: chili, so dried chili flakes, moldy fish, a little bit in there, large pinch. Does sound like moldy yeah, fish. So when you say it quickly, a uh, little bit of salt, and let's start grinding. Now in with the onions. We we'll bash them up a little bit, and then let's go in with the coconut now. Bring it all together with some lime. The idea of the segment is also zero waste. You know, we it's try and it's use quite everything. literally the perfect condiment in terms of the, the way you season stuff. Yeah. The, the seasoning triangle, you've got salt, you've got sugar, and you've got acid. You've also got umami, and you've got fattiness from coconut. It literally yeah. ticks all of the boxes on paper. Mm. Does it taste any good? Ooh. Hello. Oh, the Lord of God. Woo! Tony. Okay. Happy balls. <laughs> Hello, mummy. That wasn't the reaction I was expecting. That's giving me everything. Oh. First of all, you're like, oh, freshy, zingy, lovely. And then you're like, get down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. But what, I'm guessing it's not meant to be eaten on its own. Exactly. Hoppers, egg hoppers. Um, this is, I mean, very traditionally in Sri Lanka, all you would have is a hopper and this and nothing else. Sometimes on the side with some rice. I'm on the roller coaster again. <laughs> <laughs> I presumed we were going to cook it. We were going to put it into a stew or something like that and it was going to add a, an umami taste. What actually that's done is gone in raw, but because it's not pungent, it just adds an amazing overall flavour. Mm -hmm. And it's not super fishy, but it's just, it elevates everything within there. I mean, would you Come even think right. it's fishy? I don't taste the fish in there, do you? <laughs> No, and I think it's like when you add like good anchovies into like lamb meat or something like that. Exactly that. Just roundness. Exactly. <laughs> you ready for number three? Yes. Let's cut. Oh, we're doing so well. <laughs> I mean, it looks like soy sauce. It does. It's not. It's not. It's not soy it's not. sauce. It doesn't smell like it. It looks more syrupy. Oh, it is. Look, at, look at the viscosity. Oh, it could be from a tree. <laughs> it looks like sap. Dip a ditch. Oh, holy moly, that is wonderful. Oh, my goodness, that's so sweet. Birch syrup. Bold. You're making lots of very interesting noises. The coconut trees. Is it, is it coconut, coconut, coconut sap? sap? What is it, Karen? I mean, I think you've, you, you're 90% of the way. Coconut sap was a very good, very close guess. So there's a tree called the kithul tree in Sri Lanka. That is called kithul treacle. So from the flower of the, of the kithul tree, uh, you then snip it and you collect the sap, which you then boil down with sort of wooden fires. And that's where the smokiness comes from. Ooh. So you can go to friends and you can go to villages and people will just give it to you. Tap your sort of own, reduce it down. Arak bottles and you know, I, I always bring a bottle back. And then when that's sort of reduced even further, it becomes jaggery, which uh, yes. is almost a solid block, a bit yeah. like cane sugar or palm sugar. Again, another ingredient that we're hugely familiar with the concept of a sap from a tree, whether it's birch or maple, but I'd never heard of this. Uh, but, you know, one of the simplest desserts and probably one of the most favourite desserts in Sri Lanka is curd and treacle. So they use buffalo curd or buffalo yoghurt, so set yoghurt and treacle. Unfortunately, Kushun couldn't find a buffalo or buffalo oh, milk. <laughs> so he's got you some yoghurt. We've also got um, agave, honey and maple as well as a comparison. Drizzle over yoghurt, simple, simple breakfast or dessert. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. oh, I like that. I like that a lot. It's got another dimension in that smokiness to it. There's levels, isn't it? So it's and almost like a grown-up version of agave or maple, and also very low in GI, so good health benefits. 
And I think that's the beauty of this one. I can see 101 places where you're already cooking something that you're familiar with. You mm. just take out what you usually use and, and sub in with this for a different dimension. It is so much more complex mm, yeah. and it has more going on than just sweetness. I really like that. Any help? Just yet. Cloud egg onto the paper. Oh. Last one, number four. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. Is, that a, is that a cooking instrument or just an instrument? I think that's part as half of a symbol. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> oh wow, look at the texture yeah. of that. It feels like a pan to use on fire. Uh, that's not going to work on induction, unfortunately. <laughs> is it? It's something you cook like a big pancake in, and then it forms that. What's the bowl you get? A hopper. A hopper. It's a hopper. The clues are there. It's a hopper pan. <laughs> He's been wearing the pan there the whole go. time. The hat, the <laughs> t-shirt, every level of branding. He's been yeah. staring at me. There you go. You're <laughs> absolutely right. And oh, I'd be crap. very upset if you weren't by now. We're number four. You hit the nail on the head. That's a hopper pan. Yeah. And that is the traditional hopper pan. It's aluminium. So really good conductor of heat, but also very light. Gets hot really quick, gets cold really quick. In my opinion, the best way of making the traditional Sri Lankan hopper. But if you want the crisp edges, the little pooled sort of fluffy middle, this is the only way to go. And we couldn't invite Karen into the studio without getting him to cook. So, what's he gonna Karen's cook? gonna make us a hopper. So guys, let me tell you what a hopper is. It's obviously what our, our restaurant get its gets its name from. Uh, but effectively, it's a bowl-shaped pancake made with fermented coconut and rice. You use a special kind of rice, a short grain rice as well as a longer grain rice. We then soak them ferment, uh, and then grind them with coconut and a touch of yeast to it. This is the That's batter. It's completely gluten-free and it's a delicious, delicious pancake. So you can have that plain, you can have that with an egg in the middle, or you can have it with coconut milk. Uh, the only way, because your ear is so sort of sensitive to heat, the only way to know if it's hot enough is to actually Stick it close here. You've got to be careful about this. You lose your attention and you'll go, you know, you'll have a nice red ear. It's also important you preheat the lid. So I even put it on there just to get it hot enough. So it goes in, you hear that little sizzle swirl all the way around. And then you see that little bit will pool in the middle. And the edges are really nice and thin. Goes down there. Lid on. And now just wait. You will find that some of them stick. You will find oh. some don't. There you go. First one's always a little funny. And I guess once your batter's made, fermented, and pans up to temperature, they're pretty quick to cook. Quick to make unless you get the first one stuck. I'm gonna go in with an egg. So this will obviously take a little bit longer. A little cracking of pepper. So many variables here. You've got the pan, which needs to be seasoned, which needs to be at the right heat. Too hot, you're gonna burn it. Too cold, it's gonna stick and never come off. Then you need to get that heat right because it needs to wrap around all the way up, otherwise you'll find the edges haven't cooked and they were too cold. So you need to have the right size wok or the right size hopper pan for the right size hob. But why, why did you name your restaurant after these? So hoppers are obviously you know, very iconic of, of Sri Lanka and very iconic street food. Um, when we were conceptualizing this and you know, it was a, it was, this big, massive brainstorm between my brother-in-law who founded JKS Restaurants. You know, he came up with the idea of doing a Sri Lankan restaurant. I had traveled to Sri Lanka, had friends there, loved South Indian food. So we sort of came together, we started thinking about it. This was almost a working title that then just stuck on. Yeah, we know and, about those, yeah. Uh, was it the same? Yep. Yeah. The fact that it literally lifts off the plate and it's, it's 3D food, and it is just, it's, it's, it's unique. And I think if you haven't had one before, it always gets that well. 
come in guys, come in, dig in. Don't Remember ask, that. Don't have to ask me twice. Pull sambal we had. Rip in. Get your pull sambal. And look at that as a serving dish, guys. That's just. The upcycled yes, coconut. Yes, yes, Every part of it is. Yes, 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 yes. It's yes. almost like marshmallowy in the middle. <laughs> oh, there we go. I'm on. Here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's like char on the crispy edge. That light, fluffy bottom. Look at, look at that coming up. Now that hop. is a bullshit pancake for a coconutty hopper. It's so good. And for me, flavours are great. It's the textures that make it because you have got that fluffy middle and then those crispy edges. Oh, look at the colour on that. Yeah, look at that. Oh. Right, guys, so we cracked that egg. Yeah. I'm going to go in and make, make something super special out of it. So green chilies, mate. There we go. Wait for that cheese to melt. Oh, 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 oh. Dig into that, that one. That one looks really naughty. It's going to be hot. Chili cheese omelette hopper. There you go. There you go. Oh, hot. Okay. <laughs> I hope we've shared some really interesting stuff with you. I've had an amazing time. The one of the best discoveries ever here, Lyme. Thank you so much for coming in and showing us. And if you want any of those ingredients we've experimented with today, you can actually get them in the links down below to the Cash and Carry. We'll link to yeah. that. Yeah. Um, it's actually where we also got the very first meal kit that we tried from Hoppers, and it was phenomenal. And you've got another project that's going on at the moment that's quite close to your heart. What's that? So we've celebrated Sri Lanka and Sri Lankan food here today, and I think it's only right to sort of acknowledge the situation going on in Sri Lanka as we speak today. There's been this massive political and economic crisis over there and there's been people who are right at the bottom of you know, the, the ladder and they have lost livelihoods. 20 pounds can buy a family of four enough rations for an entire week. So we're gonna do a special at the restaurant that's 20 pounds and all that money goes to a family in Sri Lanka. We've got partners on the ground who are gonna be going out and distributing this stuff themselves. We want 100% transparency. There's gonna be no admin fees to the extent that we can avoid it. And you know, even if it's not with us, just read about what's happening and try and contribute because it's such an amazing country and such amazing people, but they've just had such a hard time. Well, we've had a tiny taste of Sri Lanka today, so thank you for that. But we're also gonna to contribute to the charity down below. All the links downstairs, go and check it out, read up more. And if you can, it'd be lovely if you could too. Thank you guys. A massive thank you to you. I'm gonna go eat more of this. <laughs> Fantastic, I'm gonna keep <laughs> Can I play hoppers? with your hoppers pan, please? Yeah. I wanna go. If you get stuck on a desert island uh, because your FedEx plane has crashed, you can turn it into a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into a friend, yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that, that, that might not be an original idea.